start streaming. Hello, everybody. Robert Breaker here somewhere. Uh, you should be able to hear me. If you can hear me, let me know. And let me see if I can figure out to see how you can see me. And uh, there we are. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear the sound. This is Robert Breaker. And um, got Laura over here helping out. Am I on there? And they can hear me? We're all good? Now, let me know if they can hear him, okay? You got to come tell me. Um, so, all right, Robert Breaker here with you uh, from thecloudchurch.org. I've got so much to get into today, and I hope it will be a blessing for you. Uh, we've got a lot to, to look at today. Cloudchurch.org. Okay, um, I've got a guest today that I want to uh, talk with, and I want to get on there. Sound is good. We're good to go. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to start with some verses real quick. So I'm going to take you to some Bible verses. But also, I want to remind you, always go to my website, thecloudchurch.org. And always remember to check there every week for the Sermon of the Week. And we would love to have you there and come with us and see the sermon. The Sermon of the Week behind me is in Spanish. And uh, that's a blessing. So today, I'm going to um, go to the Bible first. And we're going to go to the Word of God, and I'm just going to show you some verses before we get started this morning, or excuse me, this evening. And a couple of verses about edification. Ephesians 4.29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of, and here's the word, edifying. Edifying is so important, and it's all about edifying. And I want to be an edifying person, and I want to edify you, and I have a guest today that's going to edify us. And it says that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And that's the desire of my heart, is to minister grace and to be edifying to you. Uh, let's go down here to Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. And start out today with a bunch of verses. Romans 4, 19. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. And that's what it's about, is trying to edify others. And that's what we want to do today. We want to be a blessing. We want to edify you with the truth. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 11. Oh, that must not be it. Uh, I went to Timothy. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And that's another thing that we should do. We should always try to edify and comfort one another. What is our great comfort? The rapture. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Then Romans chapter 15 and verse 2. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. So it's all about that edification, which means to build up. And we want to build people up with scripture. We want to help people. We want to strengthen their faith. That's our desire. Um, let's uh, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 8 now. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification, now watch what Paul says, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. A lot of people today claim to be Christians, and uh, they don't focus in on what the Bible teaches, which is edification. It seems like they want to uh, spend more time on, uh, I don't know, hurting people and uh, trying to destroy people. So they go to their extreme and their folly, and that's fine. They can help themselves. I would much rather go to the other extreme and be on the side of the Lord and of the Bible and the side of edification. And so that's what I'd like to do today. So without further ado, I'm going to um, introduce you today to Sean O'Rourke. And here is Sean O'Rourke. And Sean, if you could unmute for us. Everybody, this is doing? Sean O'Rourke, and Sean has a website. 
and he's been emailing me for a while about the website. It has been written dot com, right? That's correct. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Sean. And uh, oops, All I right. didn't brought you on yet. There you All are. Right. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, how you found me and everything else. All right. Well, hello everybody. All right. And well, hello everybody. Of course, and thank you for doing this. Of course, thank you for doing this and having me on here to talk about this. Having me on here to talk about this. And thank you for all. I got to thank you for all the sermons you do. I learned so much just. I have learned so much just watching your first Bible studies. Your like first Bible studies, Hebrews like I told you earlier, Hebrews was just. I know there was so much to be found in there. So thank you for all that you do. Well, good. And to explain the website, to explain the website, I got to tell you a bit about myself. Basically, um, my, my dad was basically, a doctor. My, my, was my a dad nurse. was a doctor. My mom was a nurse. And, and he started a couple churches. And, and he started a couple sure. churches. And he was a creationist. And get rid of the echo. Um, I suppose when I was, uh, there was. A, can you hear me? Would, yeah, yeah. I, we had an good? echo. Now that I've done this, maybe the echo will go away. We're checking on that. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Um, all right. So yeah, I. Uh, my parents had a pretty nasty divorce in high school and our family life kind of got pretty ugly and I started to question the okay, Bible thanks. and I started to question my parents and I went through that whole crisis of faith like people talk about and well essentially I told my mom I'm gonna try and prove the Bible wrong if I can and I'll show you sort of thing and instead of that I actually proved it correct to myself and you know at first, I was kind of frustrated, angry. I didn't understand God. Uh, I didn't understand life. And I eventually, you know, I did my thing for a while. And I realized what it was worth. Over time, God worked on me. He gave me patience. He helped me with my anger. And um, eventually, I had, you know, enough screwing around and sinning. I came back to God knowing that it's the truth and only the truth matters and I kept finding myself talking to other people about why I believed and I, I became a mechanic so I was very um, mechanically minded and I'm used to diagnostic trouble trees where you have to basically go through these things and come to a conclusion as you try and figure out a problem and you know prophecies in the Bible and proving all this stuff is very similar to that so I mean, at one point, I had quit my job as a mechanic, I was stock trading for money, and I knew how to make a website for a patent I was going to sell. So that wasn't working out um, very well, but I knew how to make a website, and right about that time is when I had repented and said, you know what, God, everything I have good in my life is because you gave it to me, I'm your servant. Like help me know what to do. I got a lot of information rattled around in my head and I, I didn't quite know what to do with it. So here I am without a job. I'm making money, stock trading, and I knew how to make a website. And at that time, I, there were some people in my life who didn't believe in the Bible. They fell away from it too. And I was like, if you guys could only see how much proof there is for it, you would believe. And all of a sudden, my whole life of all this checking and spending time with Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and even some Muslims. Um, and then the whole creation thing, like my dad was a creationist who taught seminars and I knew this stuff loosely, but I didn't know the details and there's a lot to remember. So half the reason I have this is because, you know, you could be witnessing with someone somewhere and you don't really know the details and we have to establish integrity. So you try talking to someone about the Bible and they're going to say, yeah, but I mean, we know it's not true because we're taught evolution in school. What about carbon dating? Do you actually know what to say about carbon dating? Like the details, if they go there? Or, you know, trilobite eyes, for example, they got compound eyes. They're unbelievably complicated, and according to them, it's like the first species. So how do they have time to evolve that? And you just got to have all these logical things to bring up. And the more you study it, the the better you get at it, the more you can kind of kind of face people and they'll change the topic on you. Probably, how do you know the writings haven't changed? And you're like, okay, well, let's go there. You gotta be ready. And then, like I told you earlier, it's, um, I took Kung Fu for a little while because they offered it at my gym for free. And I was like, well, yeah, I'll take Kung Fu. And I realized this is all great and dandy, but 
you can have a plan in your head, but if someone takes a cheap shot and pops you in the mouth, all your all your intelligence went right out the window and you get flustered and you forget what you're going to say. Right. And we got to be ready for the cheap shots. So that's where this website comes in to play. I don't, I don't get any, like, it's not monetized. I just want people to be equipped. And I don't know how I ever witnessed without it because I can't remember it all for one. And for two, wherever I am, I can say, well, let's, let's walk through it. If that's how you feel, you know, you can, can sit down and watch a video with them together, or you could even give the website to them later on. So, so your dad was a pastor, you said, and uh, yeah, I started a couple churches. There's a lot of parallels between your life and my life. If my dad wanted to be a doctor and studied to be one, and my mom was a nurse, and you said your dad was a doctor and a nurse. My dad was a teacher, a Sunday school teacher, and taught a lot of the Bible. But your dad was a pastor, you said, right, or a preacher? Yeah. But um, yeah, he he was um. He, his day job was a doctor. He had his own office and stuff, but when he wasn't doing that, he was doing Bible studies, and they had started a church called the Cornerstone in Illinois, and, and we got another one going. They kept on doing these sermons in our house that got too big. They needed a building, and they'd give it a building and send it off, and he'd keep doing the doctor right. thing. Right. And then you married someone from Australia, and now you're in Australia. Wow. Yeah. And life life crazy. there is crazy, right? It's the lockdown state or lockdown <laughs> yeah. country or something. But uh, Yes, we came in right in the middle of the lockdown. We thought we were going to escape it. And then we got here after living in California for 10 years. We got here and straight into a lockdown for another year. They were even more strict here. Yep. So, so you got away from the Lord, came back to the Lord, and you wanted, and this is what I forgot to mention, you um, have a website about apologetics, and for a lot of people don't know what apologetics yes. is. It's a word that you pay to go to college to learn, basically. And uh, it's what they mean is an apologeticist is someone that defends a certain teaching. And so they're the one that's supposed to be the expert and know everything there is about it. But what a dumb word. Because it sounds like they're apologizing yeah. for it, and it's not. You're, there are no apologies here for what you believe, but that's just the word yeah. of the apologist. And so it says there on your website, it's a collection of apology or what does it say? Um, well, we'll get into it. Apologies. Show us your website because this is what I was impressed with: is your website has a lot of great information, and I like information, and I like history, and I like it when it's all in one place where you can find it. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is so people can. Whoops can go there and look at this site. Now, you're King James only. When you first started, I don't know if you were, but you are now. And right. so on your site, there's right. some verses that aren't King James. Now, I want to encourage you, change those. Especially my my viewers, okay. they were going to be upset with you probably unless you change those as quickly as possible. But the, on, I'm upset with it too. I'm happy okay. to change them. Yeah, when I first started, I wasn't, I didn't know how much there was about that. And it's, I even have a section in here. I'll t take right. you to eventually on how they have changed. Terrible With things. New versions. When I had started building it, it wasn't um, a priority, and it has become that after studying right. it. And so, so I'll change that as okay, soon as good, I can. Good, good. And the so break. the thing I like about it is I like history, and you can go there to the part I forget what it's called about tangible evidence, and just shows history mm -hmm. and everything that the Bible says is absolute historical truth, and they found all that and you've got just such a nice way to go and see what some of the things the seals and the, the the houses of peter i watched that one today the houses of peter where they found peter's house and then all these things so you basically did what i like to do take everything you can find and put it all into one so i'll let you tell us about the website and that's what uh, that you wanted and that's on your heart is to try to get that out to people and let me just say this god gives people gifts and uh, when people use those gifts, we should encourage those gifts. And it looks like you had a gift of getting all this stuff together and putting it into one place. And it's supposed to be for helping and edifying other people. Would you say that's your desire is to try to edify others? 100%. And that is it. Like, we don't all have the same walk. But, you know, like my job as a mechanic, um, I was a master tech for BMW and high voltage specialist. And when you take these cars apart, you have to be good at organizing because... <laughs> a lot of nuts and bolts and pieces and you can't right. screw it up and so I got pretty good at organizing things and um, that's just my personal walk so I found myself making this website and needing it God also makes you who you are and I can't remember it all so I needed it <laughs> so it was good for me to share okay it. 
So, uh, all right, yeah. we can share share screen. You when you're ready to share screen, I'll put it up. I should be sharing screen right now. I haven't changed anything. There might be a window okay. minimized. Well, we can see it here. I can see share screen here on ours. So go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, um, you said you said uh, uh, we'll, start we'll start with the science, science and creation, creation bit, here. bit here. Can you see can that? You see that? So the, far, the I can see it. Yeah. So that's what the tabs are on right, the top. Right. Go ahead. Each yeah. each has a, each section. Each has a section that section it's. I, I, I didn't I didn't plan out plan out to make it to make it this way, way but every time I witness to somebody every time every time you go somewhere, go somewhere with one topic, one topic redirect, redirect it to another one, one. and I want and I want to basically basically these are all the topics I ever found myself getting re getting redirected directed to and if anything if new anything new comes along, along I'll add it like after talking after to Christian, to Christian so much how much confusion there was about salvation so that's pretty that's pretty important so I added that as far as as far as um. Creation, creation and evolution, and evolution goes. That's a massive topic. That ended up, that ended up as you can see, as you up, can here, see up here, as three, as three separate, separate sections. I had to break it down, break it down because the web page started, started getting way too big. <laughs> but, but basically, basically, if if you can think of the question, it's so, on here. So how we know that animal how we kinds know that can animal kinds interbreed? Can interbreed. These, guys, these guys, these guys, answers, answers in Genesis. Genesis. It's, it's, I have a, I have a, I have, I have a method. method. Put on socks. And if I, and watch, if I the watch the video and my socks are blown off, off I, put it, I put it on the website. website. So, so if, it's good, if it's good, it gets, it gets added. added. So, so it's best the best of everything I have seen. seen. And, and for pretty, so much, pretty every much every one, one video you see on here, I've probably watched 20. And I just want the best stuff. Okay. And they're trailheads. Now, real quick, do you, do you have Doctor. the volume um, turned down on your computer a little bit? Um, and also make sure your other thing that you're watching on is turned down. There's just a little bit of an echo um, from what I'm... What I'll turn it, but don't turn it down all the way where we can't hear you. But okay, keep going. I don't want to interrupt, but uh, I want to That's make sure right. people can hear. Don't want it echoing. Okay. All right. All right. So better. better. I guess it's, it's bearable. A bit. It's kind of a background hum, but I don't know what to do about it. So keep going. Probably if you had ear there. pieces to put in, that would probably be the best. But I don't know if you have those. Up oh, now. Okay. Okay. There we go. Unfreeze there. You're starting to unfreeze okay. there. You good? Yeah. Do you, you have any ear things like this? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear can you. you. Hear me? I can hear you. Uh, yeah. Ah. Okay. okay. Um, um, should I continue? Should I continue then? then? Yeah. If you had ear things though, that might take away that. I don't know if you want to try that or not. Echo. That way you can listen. Go ahead, then. All right. Well, we'll do the All best right. you can. Well, what we got? Right. Go ahead. All right. So anyway, so anyway, on this site, everything on this site. I did get into it. I did get into a pretty, thorough, get into a pretty each thorough, topic, but for each topic, almost but all of them are a trail. Almost guy, all of them are Dr. a trail. Phillips, this stop. guy, Dr. Phillips, he's stop. amazing when it comes to. He's amazing when he's it comes like to 50 videos. And he's got like 50 videos that he's um, posted. Um, they keep coming up. Best documentary. They keep coming up. Seen, best documentary I've ever seen where they ask why anymore. is God not taught in schools anymore? And it's just incredible. Like it's just incredible. He goes like, in and just talks. To he all goes in and just talks to all these you know, different heads of schools. You know, and heads of answers, schools and their answers. It's just mind blowing. You can't even. Believe it's just mind blowing. You can't saying. even believe you, the you stuff that they're saying. Christian, but you then suspect that it's a Christian, but then to hear it straight from them, you're It's incredible. The odds um, of evolution happening. The odds of evolution talk happening. Fossils, talk about the information fossils, from, where the information come from. Um, um, species that species that they said were primitive. They said are still were alive primitive, today. Are still like, alive today. Hundreds, like and hundreds, completely unchanged. And they're completely unchanged. You can absolutely decimate. You can absolutely if decimate if evolution stuff. if you go through and, this um, stuff. And um, is it okay? Should I? Uh, all right. How are we doing? Is that better? Okay. Um, well, to pick up where I left off. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, if you're going to go into evolution, they're always going to go. It's the same. Well, I got earbuds now. I can't do much. Mine is muted. All right. Mine was muted. Now mine's not. Now you talk and see and tell us what. Go ahead. I can, I can hear you fine. I'm just waiting to see what Laura says. You can't hear him. Not, not either of you. Weird. 
They say they can't hear either one of us, so why is that? What is going on? Um, okay, you're unmuted. I'm unmuted, okay? Is he unmuted? Okay, all right. Something something is weird with Skype. Skype is doing okay. us wrong because Skype is giving me one of you and two of you, one of you and two of you. Now there's just one of you, so I'm just going to have to keep an eye on, for some reason, um, what's going on. But go ahead. All right, go ahead. All right. All right. So if you're going to prepare to talk to somebody, I always say spend a lot of time studying this stuff because it comes up every time. It does for me. Um, there's a lot of chronometers that I like using. One of them is how the moon moves away from Earth at 1.5 inches per year. Okay. Um, that's devastating to evolution because it would have made the tides enormous only 100,000 years ago. And I've gone through and shown the math here. Um, yeah. And if you can actually brandish, like, if you can get this knowledge down to the math, you're doing pretty darn good. And this has been going on for some 60 years now, so it's pretty entertaining. You switch it around on them and watch them try to squirm their way out of this one. It's It gets kind of humorous, but you kind of have to be, be graceful, graceful about it, gentle, about gentle about it. Always, it. always come from, from a place of love, love and try to get, try to, get to the gospel, gospel as quickly as, quickly as, you, as can. you can. You can talk, you can about, talk about this stuff, stuff for, days. for days, and um, people won't... Um, they won't, they won't get, get off, off of it, but what we got to do is bring people to Christ. So this is more just being ready with an answer, as 1 Peter 3.15 says. And um, it's one thing that I've run into, one thing a, that lot, I've run like, into a lot. Like, pick a person. You know, pick if a you're person, talking to someone, you know, who's, you're all talking to someone space, who's all into space, can you hear me or am I still... Can you hear me or am I still... I, I hear you're still perfect on Skype, but... Oh, For some reason, I don't know, it keeps showing two of you on Skype and which one. We need to stop going back and forth screen sharing on Skype is the only thing I can figure. Uh, so if you can just I keep it on screen share, I, I don't know what's happening on your end, but it's giving me two Skype audios, and that's an echo, and I don't understand. No, I haven't done anything. I'm just, no, I haven't um, done anything. I'm just um, scrolling. Stop, scrolling. It's... stop the screen share. Okay, now say something and see if we can hear you. I could stop. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear? Am I echoing? Can you? I can see my website there on the video. Yeah, I see it too, and I'm trying to figure this thing out here. This is fun, isn't it? <laughs> it's always something. Do you hear him, Laura? So BMWs are hard too, huh? So Laura, can you hear him? Do you hear him at all? I hear him. Okay, so we hear you, so just go ahead with it. He's not anymore. You're not echoing anymore. You know, as we know, the planet is headed toward a pretty bad time. I've never seen anything like this. Uh oh. I know there's no Sh Sean's picture, but sound. So I don't know. We, I've never had this problem. The problem is definitely Skype. It keeps bringing you in and out, and there's two of you and two sounds. And I honestly don't know what to do. If I you recall wanna... you on Skype, we have to start all over. But um, I don't know what to do, so I can't. Well, let me try stopping screen sharing and yeah. then going back into it. And then maybe so old restart will get things going again. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, we might have to not screen share, and that's the problem. But I have over here, you just tell me where on the site and I can show it. I can pull it up on my end. Maybe that's the whole problem there. Can you hear them? Yeah. No echo, nothing. Okay, well, screen share must have been the problem. So go ahead. <laughs> Sorry about that. No echo. Can't see me. That's okay. Um, if I mean, and if you want to try this again, we can try it on some other platform like FaceTime or well, something. We can that... see you perfectly now. Uh, it seems to be freezing up on my computer for some reason, but it's not freezing up for anybody else. That's weird. Okay, all right, so go ahead. And uh, I don't know, I should just leave you the way you are because it keeps moving you all over my box here. I don't know why. <laughs> all right. Go ahead. No worries. That's what happens when you're on one side and I'm on the other. You know, <laughs> you're in Australia, we're here. People can be patient. We'll keep, we'll keep trying yeah. with technology sometimes. And it, it has been, it's been unusually weird. Like my laptop 
broke. I had to turn that one in. I got this one, and now this wouldn't turn on this morning. It's like, man, the amount of stuff that's trying to stop me from getting this out there makes you wonder. Anyway, okay, keep going. Um, as I was saying, all this stuff is uh, pick a person. Some people go to geology. you got to be ready for those answers with geology, like talk about the layers, talk about how there's no erosion between the layers, talk about polystrate fossils. Um, learn how fossils are made and how rapid the process was, how every one of these animals that died from it are in the death pose drowning. Um, this fish right here, I mean, shoot, it, it got fossilized with a fish in its mouth. It hadn't even finished its lunch, so we know it's quick. And Kent Hovind, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of him. He is, he's just amazing. This is another trailhead. These are monumental to learn these things. Grady McMurtry, 25 proofs for a young earth. Um, dinosaurs, minerals, opalification, diamonds. Like, learn a little bit about it so that, and, and you don't have to like worry about, it's not like you're going to school, just immerse yourself in it. And like a sponge, you'll absorb it eventually. And before you know it, you know more than you think. And, you know, you will forget, but go over it again. Um, I put this one in here of the Stones of Revelation 21. I always see the Bible as like three kind of branches of it. You know, the Bible trivia, remembering the names, the verses, the stories. And then there's like another leg of it is understanding what the Bible is trying to relate to you, how to, how to act, how to be the message of God to mankind and then there's like the divinity of the bible there's some things in there that are just absolutely amazing and the stones of the foundations of heaven in revelation 21 this guy talks about it a bit he says they're all uh, isotropic stones so in pure light they're just absolutely beautiful and they're the only kind of stones that do that every single one of those stones in that list is isotropic and when pure light hits it it's just like a amazing rainbow sort of effect. Stop screen sharing. Stop screen sharing because you're messing with the sound. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. I'll stop. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not doing anything but showing your website and it's messing with the sound. So we're just not going to show your website. This is one of those where you're going to just have to talk and people are going to have to come and look at your website, huh? That's every right, time we try it. to show it on your end or my end, it messes with the sound. So let's make sure the sound is good here. And then go ahead, and I just won't show the website. Wow, how weird is this? Okay, go ahead. Is that your computer there? Um, mm -hmm. I see it on the Rumble. Is it still going? I'm looking at Rumble, and I don't see. I tried to show it. Are you showing? See how you moved? Can you see yourself? How it's yeah, well, I'm looking small at and everything. It looks I don't like know what to do. Yeah, I think Stephen Stephen Hickey is right. Do it on a different yeah, platform. Well, it, it worked great. We're here before when I did it with these other guys. So um, maybe it's just Skype, and it's hard for Skype to. Do you want to try it? Like I'm, I'm all for it. If you want, it, we could end it and we could try it again on uh, FaceTime. I don't know what FaceTime would be. What is it? House FaceTime? Um, it's working great now. They say, but how do we show the website? Maybe you can use your cell phone and show it like that. <laughs> if you have to, do you have a cell phone <laughs> or your other laptop and show it that way? That'll probably be the best thing. We'll we'll uh, we'll outsmart probably, outsmart the devil be before you know it. Oh well, here we go. Um, so everything's working great. If you want to just keep talking, or what do you want to do? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I did figure out how to get it on this massive 
screen behind me earlier and even make it backwards so people could read it, but then I was all dark. Maybe that's a better yeah. way of going How about it. How can you do that? Um, uh, it takes it a, does. a lot. <laughs> what if I do it? Okay. Like, oh, Wish we thought about sure. that. That would have um, been nice. Yeah, well, we we got it going for us, but it's not working right. now. Anyway, I'm I'm happy to keep talking about it, and we don't, you know, people can go onto the websites and look at the sections as we look at them or whatever. But um, as I was saying, you know, when you start witnessing to people, they're going to go these places, and they're gonna if you put them into a corner, they're gonna they're gonna mm -hmm. jump topics on you. I think it's best to say we can talk about that too. Be ready for them and say, well, let's finish the point here. You know, often when people get uncomfortable, they want to change it because they got nothing else. And just make your point and then move on. You don't have to like run these people into the ground. We're supposed to do this with gentleness and respect. And as I said, get to the gospel as soon as possible because that's what it's about. And you can spend so much time here. Have you ever heard of um, the Matthew 1? genealogy the rule of sevens and um that. no tell me about that that's a super exciting this genealogy just seems like a list in matthew but there's a guy named okay. chuck missler who uh who i loved i like watching his stuff too and he goes through a mathematician from russia had he had this wife and she was saying you know the bible is real and you should you should read it and he's like he's a mathematician so he says you know I can see that the creator has used math for everything. And if the Bible is his book, then there's going to be some sort of math in it. And where he found it was in that same genealogy, the same one that tells the story of Christ. If you were to take that genealogy, everything about it is divisible by seven right. to an insane factor. Right. All the consonants, mm -hmm. all the vowels, wow. all the numbers of the words, all like it, he just keeps going. And there's like a list of 20 of them. And sometimes these these little things that you find in there are the thing that like it's like the arrow to their heart and they go, whoa, you know, I didn't know there was so much to this Bible. And I went through that process myself. Um, you know, when I went to go prove it wrong and you sit there and you just you're just amazed by it all. And if we could somehow get this information to people, um, you can really make a, a good big difference because often they've heard something about Jesus, but they don't even go there because they think there's so much going against it. We need to be ready with an answer and right. ready to defend it. And I, I don't know how I ever witnessed before without this. I, you just need to know. You need to know this stuff, and it's all over the place. So I just put it all in one place because I needed it. But I shouldn't be the only one with this tool. I want to give it to as many people as I can. And, you know, the watchman on YouTube, he, he mentions the website from time to time to, to help. And every, every little bit helps. Like, this website's your website, too. And um, if you know of something that's amazing, you know, I'll put it on here. That's, that's what it's all about. Um, it's got a ton of tangible evidence. Like, I can't tell you how many times I hear someone say, I don't believe in the Bible because there's no proof for it. And it just blows me away. I'm like, we got the Cyrus cylinder. That's like the cheap shot to me. You know, I've studied all this stuff. And when they say that, I'm just like dumbfounded. And I can't get the words out fast enough. But like we have 18 Nebuchadnezzar cylinders. We have Hezekiah's tunnel. We got Bula's, which are like the seal, the clay seal leave behind from the prophets Isaiah. Um, Jeremiah's captors and there's all kinds of steelies like uh, with Israel's mm -hmm. name on it and it just goes on and on and on there's like a hundred or more just on that website so you can put so these that's, things that's forward. my favorite part on the website and, tangible evidence and you can go down and you can scroll and you can watch these videos yeah. you can see the seals that they found and uh, it's just amazing and so you find that history is in line with the Bible and everyone that says, oh, man just wrote that book, and it's not. Even if man wrote that book, they were writing history. But we know God was writing through them, and we know it's God's book. So it's sad that mm. people deny the Bible. 
And everyone that seems to deny the Bible, number one, they never read it. And number two, they don't believe it. Because if you read it, you can't right. help but believe it because history proves it to be true. Amen. Go ahead. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Like I always tell people, you know, you wouldn't have you wouldn't just tell me that this facet of physics is wrong without actually opening up a physics book. I do try to encourage them to read it so that we can have an intelligent conversation about it. Um, and if it's only one little point, I'll take them to the Bible myself. We'll, King James only. We'll read it, and uh, hopefully it stirs something in them. There's, a, there's something about having a tangible Bible in front of you that kind of makes them go, you know, I, I feel like people always think that they act like I'm the one who wrote the Bible. I'm like, I didn't write the Bible. I, I'm telling you about it. This is not my stuff. I just see it, and I believe it. And it's been here for a very long time. Amen. And uh, basically, you said you liked the, uh, well, for example, how many times have you heard, oh, there's all sorts of evidence outside of the Bible, like literary, of Jesus and his stories. But that's where it stops. And that's the point where people have faith. That's where you establish the integrity and they start to respect you. Like, oh, wow, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. And you can say, Things like, well, yeah, there's Tacitus, Pliny the Younger, right. Lucian, Josephus. And you can take them to these things and say, this is where they said it. This is what yeah, they said. They were there, too. Yeah, I just you saw know. the other day Pilate and the letter that Pilate wrote uh, about Jesus and being crucified and everything like that. And that still exists today. And that was really neat. I don't know if you've seen that letter from Pilate. Uh I haven't seen the letter. I would. That's the kind of thing. Like, if there's something like that. You know, it's just me and this website. There's, I'm the only one who has anything to do with it. Um, if you think of something, the, my email address is on the bottom of every yeah. page. You know, put you it together. You hear that, people? You can send that to them. Now, your website's set up for all different languages, I noticed. So, los que me miran en español yeah. pueden ver. Those are key. But is the video in Spanish or is it only in English or in another language? Uh, the videos. What's cool about YouTube videos is you can actually have them translated. If you go mm -hmm. and watch them on a desktop, I think they made it available on phones now too, but on desktops and laptops for sure, every video you go to, you can turn on closed captions and it'll put so it in the language. So this is for multiple choice. languages for people all over the world to come to. About 18 of them, yeah. I got coronavirus for two weeks and I sat down and went through <laughs> and translated that all with a one wow. paragraph and and title at a time. <laughs> Someone says, uh, wow, I can share with my friends in Japan. You implemented the language tool for everything on the site, so you can definitely do that. If you know someone in another language, you can send them that and have them. It's on the top right, right, where they can click the language of theirs. Tell us more yep. about it, even though we can't see 90%. it. Just talk us through some of the other things that are in it. Sure. Yeah, like 90% of the world's spoken languages is the 18 that I picked. Um, the numbers are rough, but it's... Um, a lot of the charts, I tried to find the charts in that language as well, which is tricky for me because I don't speak all these languages. Um, so if someone does speak the languages and they're like, hey, can you get this chart in whatever Chinese? Um, let me know and I'll try. Spend a little bit of extra time on Chinese because it's a Oh, it's a hard well language. There's language. a good book about that and how the characters line up with the Bible. I uh, forget. Yeah. I just bought that book. God's promise to the Chinese. I haven't read it yet. I can't I'm remember the name of the one to. I'm thinking of, but it tells you how their little symbols are like symbol for a garden is like one man and one woman in a in a garden or something. I mean, it all ties back to God in the Bible. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Eight people in yeah. a boat, I think, is for uh, a ship yep. or something like that. That's another, that, and that's, that's a big one because people are like, well, what about the Chinese dynasty? There's always someone who goes back there and they're like, didn't that predate the flood? No. And you kind of have to go into that. The Epic of Gilgamesh oh, yeah. gets brought up a lot. That's a cool um, You got to know about cuneiform and the history of the writings, like uh, Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek. And then there's a lot being uncovered about what they call the Proto Sinaitic, which it just means the first from Sinai. And it was like the Hebrew before Hebrew and the shapes of these things. And once you start like diving into this stuff, you start learning about amazing things like the first word, or the word in the Bible, the Alpha and the Omega. The uh, It's like Jesus was referencing that word from the very first 
Greek, or I mean Hebrew um, language, and that's incredible. The stuff once you start uncovering all these things, it just opens up the Bible in such an amazing way. And you know, the more I keep digging, Amazed. the more I'm just my right. faith keeps growing. And that's that's growing. the way it is. If you believe the Bible and read it, and the problem is the world is taught from an early age, don't read the Bible. There's a bias against God in the Bible in our world. And um, it's like they want people to be ignorant. They want them to be dumb on purpose. I call it the dumbing down of America and dumbing down of the world. They don't want people empowered. And the Bible empowers you. It really does because you read it. It teaches you how to live a fruitful, moral life in which you'll have true happiness. And it's like they don't want people to be happy. And they say, oh, that Bible, that won't make you happy. And they tell you what makes you happy is sin. The more you sin, the more guilt you have, the less happiness and joy. So joy and peace comes 100%. through God in the Bible. And we read some verses at the beginning of this where I read about edification and peace. And so true peace comes from God and the Bible and history. And there's just so many things to study. Um, when I got saved, I was going to the University of West Florida. And I would love to go to the library and just read. And you mentioned the Epic of Gilgamesh. I just, man, I read that in like one day just sitting on the library floor. I would do all the work they said to do, and then I'd go to the library and just read book after book and just couldn't get enough. And I just found out, you know, what they're teaching is their agenda. <laughs> it's like propaganda. It's like they want you yeah. to know and believe this, but there's so much more out there that they don't even know about. It's like the ignorant trying to teach you to be ignorant. Totally. When you could study and find for yourself so yeah. much truth. Yeah, but people don't study, do they? It's sad. No. It's a hundred percent, and it's still happening. Like, I've heard so many people tell me there's just too many people. And I'm like, that's not right. The case. We have the ability to support a lot of people here. There is a lack of infrastructure, and they're going to turn this whole thing against people. And there's going to be a lot of persecution. It's not. We know where it's headed, but you know, Hitler's entire thing, and this is on the website too, is rooted in evolution. It's all about you know, saving the genes and keeping them mm -hmm. good. And natural selection has stopped that. So we need to take action and before the world implodes. Well, there, so there's your climate, climate change. Ridiculous. Like, yep. once they used to call it global there. warming. And mm -hmm. then they realized, exactly. oh, science is proving it's not getting hotter, it's right. getting colder. Oh, what do we do? So now they call it climate change. And they tell you that you are a denier of, of facts if you deny that the climate changes. Well, Climate changes every day. One day it's raining, the other day it's not. How do you deny that it changes? You don't. But what they mean by it is it's changing so bad that we're to blame and that we should all die so that Mother Earth lives. That's their... <laughs> so they have murder in their heart and an agenda of global depopulation because they want to save our planet. And the only one that's here to save our planet was Jesus. 100%. <laughs> so what if they come to the one who said he came to save? Because they want to save themselves. It's such a spiritual um, battle as well as a physical. So looking, exactly. So you got to be ready for. It. So looking at the website here, you've got science like, of creation, tangible as evidence, history of the writings, evil and power. That's one of the things we could talk about, and how those in charge are working for who? The devil, uh, spiritual wickedness in high places, and yeah. the Illuminati, and all that. Go ahead. How real? How real that all is is terrifying. Actually, that was one of the things that first kind of woke me up. And I was thinking to myself, I better go learn the things of God a lot better before I even go near that. Because you can go down so many yeah. rabbit holes with that. But um, the Nephilim, are, that's the main one. There's a guy uh, by the name of L.A. Marzulli. And I cannot, like, if you see a video set on there, whether it's Patterns of Evidence L.A. Marzulli, um, whoever you find on there, it's it's like the best of that department. Bill Salas, for all the prophecy stuff, um, he really goes through that with a fine-tooth comb. Um, but back to, like, the climate change stuff, like, there was a time when you could look this up a lot easier, and I tried finding it again, and it's not, it's getting harder and harder to find this stuff. But, like, when a volcano goes off, it actually lowers the temperature of the planet. And... They produce a lot of CO2 when they go off. Even if they don't produce, let's say that volcanoes don't produce any CO2 at all, and it goes off and it lowers the temperature of the planet, that alone tells you there's more factors than just carbon. 
there's other things here that they're not talking about, but they've weaponized carbon oh, yeah. dioxide. And we and we are carbon-based life not, forms, and they want to tax carbon. And yeah. They want you to reduce your carbon emission. Basically, they're saying they want you to not exist. But we breathe out carbon dioxide, which is what plants breathe in. So why would you want to get rid of that unless you want the plants to die and us all too? <laughs> no one thinks these things through, do they? If you think it right. through, it's a depopulation agenda. There's no, no well, way around that. 100%. And just because I'm my mechanical nature, the reason I became a mechanic is because I want to know how things work. And people aren't willing to put in the effort to find out what all is involved. And if you do that, all these things just start falling apart. Um, ice layers is another one that you got to bring up. This is the story of the two World War II aircraft mm -hmm. that crashed in Greenland, I think it was. And Kent Hovind, I think, has a video on that. He talks about how, well, how, how deep do you think these planes were? Because this collector wanted to go and retrieve right, them and that. repair them. And they were like 250 feet deep under all these layers. Yeah. And as they were descending down to these planes, he's counting the layers and saying, you know, as you get lower and lower, they get tighter and tighter. And this is something that comes up with climate change. The CO2 comes up with climate change. Start learning your opponent's jabs and their moves and stuff and get ready for them. Um, it helps a lot, <laughs> tremendously. And you don't have to have that anxiety when you start witnessing right. with somebody. Like, it's scary stuff. If you ever watch Ray Comfort out on the streets when he's talking to people, it's like, oh, yep. man. He really hits them between the eyes, and you you do it too. And like, everybody can do this. And I started using the apologetics platform to get to Jesus to bring it up. You say, you know, what do you think about minerals or whatever? And you bring up something that's amazing to you Amen. and you take it to Jesus. It, it gets you there quicker. It makes it more right. comfortable. You can always turn any conversation into Jesus if you try hard enough. And that's what we we want. That's what you want. Yeah. Um, I like your website. Um, it has signs and prophecies, the final week, and salvation. And rapture watchers, too, are watching for the rapture. So there's a lot of good stuff on it. And um, you uh, are talking about getting your jabs in. Well, that's spiritually, you know, but also physically. You were in karate. Tell me about that. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I was, uh, there was just a gym that offered kung fu. And I, I try to be as honest with myself as I can. It was free kung fu. I'm like, sure, I don't, I don't know how to fight. Um, I lived in some pretty dicey areas in California, so it could have come up. But um, I learned right away that, you know, you formulate these plans in your head, and uh, they're all great and dandy until someone, you know, pops you in the mouth, and all your plan goes out the window. And witnessing is no different. Like. You kind of need to be a little bit more ready than your your plan. You have to adapt to your opponent. Your opponent is going to bring something up mm -hmm. you may not be ready for. And, you know, like Bruce Lee says, you got to be like water and mold to the container. And that's what I have found. I'm I'm trying to like broaden my knowledge just so that I can reach more people. So when a certain type of person brings up the history of the writing, some people are really fixated on that. Some people are really fixated on minerals um go there with these people learn learn about them um the rapture comes up a lot like the rapture in this salvation section are massive just with talking to other christians it's incredible how many people are foggied up about uh salvation and you can prove the pre-tribulation rapture all those videos there's like 12 videos on the rapture and each one addresses a different thing like some people say it wasn't even spoken about until the 1800s. And you're like, well, here's eight examples where it was. Um, so that's wrong. And you start learning more so that you can defend your position more. You can have faith, too. The effect it has on you is your faith goes up every time you attack one of these topics. And, you know, just the other day, this guy was telling me that you can lose your salvation. So... I wanted to go through it again. I haven't, I have a lot of it on the salvation section, but I, I read the New Testament in like three days quickly just so that I could see the congruency of all these verses together about how we're saved through faith by grace. And that's meant to cause you to repent. And 
that's what I try to relay to them. You want to have the answers for this stuff, like how John the Baptist came forward to show how we're going to be baptized through the Holy Spirit. And, you know, it's the same argument when they talk about the circumcision. Like, you guys are so stubborn. When Stephen got stoned, he's like, your, your hearts are still uncircumcised. You think that you're going to be saved by your outward actions, and you still don't believe. And it's the whole... It's the whole thing. It's always like we need clarity on that. It's amazing how many people don't have it. And I just I just want to provide this tool for people to do a better job because it helps me enormously. Amen. So you put that all together as a tool to help for witness. So that's why I had you on. So you can people can look that up and see that. And like you said, it's like karate. You're always trying to defend. And when you see your opportunity, you attack. And we don't, we don't want to attack people, but you yeah. know what we're trying to say. The illustration is give them truth. While they're giving us their lies, because many of people have been propagandized, what's the word, have been lied to and deceived so much that they need to see the truth. And like you told me when we talked before, most people, they just don't know. And then somebody catches them off guard and says, well, what about this? And they don't, well, I don't know that answer. I didn't see that in the Bible. Well, you don't need to be caught off guard if you go to your website and look at a lot of this stuff and you'll have the answers to a lot of things. So you've got a good job putting together a, um, a nice website. It's pretty cool. Now, uh, I want to go to a couple of things here. And if you have some questions, ask some questions for us. I don't know if we'll go too much longer. But, um, uh, yeah, so you've got a lot of uh, interesting things there. You mentioned the Nephilim. And the Nephilim, for those that don't know, that's the Hebrew word for the giants. And the giants were the spawn of fallen angels with man. And it produced a giant with six fingers and six toes. That's not a human being. We have five fingers and five toes. So they're in the Bible. And you mentioned Marzuli. There's a lot of people out there that I'm sure when people watch this, they'll like, oh, Breaker's one of those. But, well, there's the guys out there that tell truth, but they may not have all the truth. But you can glean the truth from them and just leave the weirdness. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? There's guys that have a lot of truth and then a lot of error. Oh, oh yeah. But like I was taught in Bible school, it's like eating chicken. You eat the meat and you leave the bones. So when you're dealing with people and, and you see things like that, maybe on your site you have some people you put there, they're not 100% on everything right. But if even if they're only 80% or 90%, that 80-90%, add that to your repertoire of truth and just leave the other 10-20% that they're wrong on. So we're not trying to uh, tell people to accept everything <laughs> that everyone says. We want them to practice discernment, right? But um, the good stuff, that's what we're after. Um, so you've got the good stuff, and you've collected it over the years and put it on there. So amen. 100%. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff. And I can't tell you how many times I thought I was going to tackle a topic, and I didn't expect much. But then the socks got blown off. The Shroud of Turin didn't expect much there holy moly that is an amazing topic and same with the nephilim and the, the mound builders and such like you know all you got to do is watch it see if it is anything good and you know i've sifted through a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. for you so um as far as i'm concerned it's amazing i haven't seen anything better and if you have something better I'd like to remind you to send it to right. me. And so, yeah, I'll anybody have... that's watching this and you find some good stuff, send that to them to add to the site and have more um, verses and tangible evidence that people can see. But a lot of good information on there. And how long have you been doing this? How long have you been on that site? Well, it's been like eight years now. I've been going on and I've been editing it and making it look better and uh, fixing all my spelling and grammar issues, I think I got most of them. You can, you can send me them, right. too, if you find them. Um, but, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a while now, and I do try to make it as concise as right. possible. You know, I feel like putting the entire Bible up there, but that's what Bibles are for. This is, I'm trying to keep it. Well, my thought is know, this is great tool for a preacher or a Sunday school teacher to be able to go here and, and find things that they can teach in Sunday school as well and, because there's a lot of good information. Sure. What's the one picture, um, where is that one picture that has, almost looks like a rainbow of all the cross-references? Tell me about that. Oh, yeah. That's in the right, prophecy there. section. That's the prophecy section. It's amazing. That's just a visual aid to represent um, all the prophecies 
that tie together, like Chuck Missler says, the uh, the New Testament or the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed, and that's a picture to represent all the references and prophecies mm -hmm. between the two. It it really is an integrated, unified right. messaging system okay. that cohorts and agrees with itself over all these years, all these people, and all of those verses, like. I always tell people it sounds dodgy when you hear it, but if you see something that seems to be a contradiction to you, it's something that you're missing, right. something you don't understand. The Bible mm -hmm. does not contradict itself. If you think it does, that's something that you don't understand. And when you find that, go tackle it like head on because that's Amen. means you're about to learn something. So this was done by Christopher Romhild and Chris Harrison. And uh, 63,779 cross references found in the Bible. And it just shows how they all intertwine. Mm. The Bible um, proves itself true time and again. And it's just incredible. So if you get a chance, go to the signs and prophecy section and see that. Okay, well, well tell us more. That's what else exactly you got it. for us? So the prophecy, when it comes to that stuff... Um, I like I try to get all the details you can about it. Like it's kind of an overwhelming topic. You it it makes you read the Bible. If you want to understand these things, like if you want to understand the rapture a little bit better, you got to go study the feasts. If you want to understand Revelation, you got to read the whole Bible because it's coded to the Bible. So once you start doing that, the prophecy starts opening up to you and you can actually go to the math like with the Daniel 69 weeks I couldn't find that anywhere so I had to do it myself I found the proposed decree dates for part of Xerxes in Nehemiah to restore and rebuild uh, Jerusalem that's the one I settled on and when you plug in the uh, 1703 880 days from that day you land right on the crucifixion now, I know that there's some arguments out there for whether it was 445 or 444, or whether he died in 32 or 33, and some people are saying 26 now. But if you go to these prophecies, um, they have to work together. So when you plug in this number, it can. the Bible is exact. God is exact. He doesn't force his prophecies. Like, it's sort of close. You, you have to make sure everything agrees with itself. And you can actually do that. You can start solving all these you know prophecies put them together and you start forming this big picture and that's another mind-blowing i mean you can imagine me and my on my coffee table you know plugging in this math plugging the number and i see it lands right on that proposed death date of what i had settled on for the degree and the death date and it's like whoa you know this thing is real and the more you go to solve those I have a list of all the prophecies of Christ, well, at least 30 of them or so. The odds just start piling right. up and piling up and piling up. And every time you tackle one of these things, the same happens to your faith. And it makes dealing with the world a lot easier. Like, I wake up amazed now every day. You know, I can't look at my own hands and not wow. think about God. <laughs> like, I love it. It causes me to worship all day long, but it also makes being in this world a lot harder because you see how many right you see what's happening and like it says with much wisdom comes much grief Amen. grief so that's a process knowledge, but, <laughs> knowledge increases know, sorrow have... that's what the king james says get the king james verses yeah. all right yeah uh, okay I'll, you I'll got go a lot through. to do because there's a lot of verses on there but um where where is the one about the king james yeah. on your site where is that that's History in uh, History of the Writings. I brandished two verses where uh, the NIV, for example, has removed Jesus Christ. And how is that any different from uh, right. Jehovah's Witnesses? Like, they changed it. That's a massive thing to, to take out. It says, by which all things were made through Jesus Christ. And they just got rid of it, probably because they didn't have the faith in it then. But... Um, another one where the King James says, do not change these words, and the NIV like, completely mm -hmm. changed the words. I mean, it's horrible. Um, I don't know all of them. I'd actually, I know there's a lot more than just that. So if someone has those already listed, I know a lot of the numbers disagree. Um, but 
those two were particularly heinous, in my opinion. So right. <laughs> those are the ones I put up. It's already a big. Well, if you haven't seen my video to... yet on where it's the Bible up. comes from and the Bible text, you got to remember the there's good text and bad text. The Sinaiticus is a horrible text. The Codex Sinaiticus and Vaticanus and and so that's a good thing to know which are the true line of text, which are the bad lines, because you mentioned some of those here. Texas Receptus is good, but um, a lot yeah. of good information. And uh, just keep studying, keep putting it up. I see you got Chuck Missler. Have you got any of Les Veldick stuff up? Okay. Uh, no, not him. Um, with the text stuff, Ken Johnson, that guy has absolutely made so many things available, whether it's the Book of Jasher, Jubilees. Um, he's got a book for the rapture and ancient has, prophecies um, revealed. He actually goes through and point out which, like, he's super diligent. You know, he goes through the Dead Sea Scrolls and he can actually show you, like, the bad texts and the good texts. And he mentions it every time. And he's like, you know, we have to keep the Bible, the Bible, and other books right. out. You know, Enoch is one that gets brought up a lot. And it, a lot of people are kind of Enoch 1. 2 and 3 are obviously you know, forgeries, fake, not good, but Enoch 1 is, um, it says at the end of the book, do not add me to the okay. Bible, basically. And and yet Jude references it in verses 14 and 15. And um, there's something to so it. So do you, you believe know? those are scripture, so, or do you just believe they're extra canonical? You know, I, I think they're, ex the book Enoch 1, I dismiss completely, Enoch 2 and 3. Um, the fact that Jude quotes it, Jesus' brother, I think there's no higher reference for another book than right. the Bible. So, like, the Bible references the book right. of Jasher in Joshua, 2 Samuel, and 2 Timothy. So, I don't right. take them as scripture, but it's like, you know, the Bible's referencing it. So, I right. was curious and I read them. And you learn couple extra details and it was neat to kind of see it from right. a different camera angle. see i do the same thing i read them just um, to see what they say but i don't take them over our 66 books and i don't want to teach anything in them as over the right. bible because the bible to me are the 66 books but out of curiosity i read them too um, i don't agree at all with the ones the catholics have those extra canonical books oh those are awful tobit and bell the dragon and all that yeah. but the bible does mention the book of jasher the book of what is it, Nathan, Gad the Seer, Jubilees. Jubilee. And they basically sound almost like the Bible. They're just like you said, a couple extra details, which yep. I don't even know if we should even, it, it doesn't even matter if we knew or not, because we know what we know from the Bible. So yeah, exactly. the Bible itself is all we need, not ascend to read them and look at what they say, but we should never teach those above the Bible. Right. You agree with that, right? Now, Ken Johnson, he's right. pretty awesome. I've got... Yeah. His books like this many up here. Let me grab them real quick since we don't have yeah. a website to look at. Maybe we can look at other things real quick. But yeah, he does have it. some interesting books. He's made a lot available for us. Like uh, here. every time I keep on, I keep on uh, finding this guy's name, and I'm like, man, how come all these books I'm buying are put out by Ken uh, Johnson? He just makes man, them available for you. So Ken Johnson, I am pretty impressed with his that. scholarship and a lot of the things that he taught. Now, I don't agree with him 100%, and he's not King James only. He sometimes goes to the new King James, and I don't like that. And he thinks right. it's okay because he thinks it's from the Texas Receptus, but the new King James is not, not 100%. Froze there for a second. Well, where do we freeze? Can you hear? So, okay, so, uh, I mean, I like Ken Johnson, but like I said, he's not 100% King James. He goes to the new King James. He goes to some other versions, which I don't appreciate. I think he should stick only with the King James, because the new King James is not from the same text. But he has so many good books that are just a good read. Now, I'm not telling you to believe them. I'm just, use yeah. discernment. Ancient paganism, the sorcery of the fallen angels. And he ties in how fallen angels taught men what's witchcraft so witchcraft is actually taught them by the fallen angels cults in the trinity that's a really good book and these yeah. are by ken johnson by the way the end times by the ancient church fathers and uh, ken johnson read all the ancient church yeah. fathers now you kind of have to be careful because uh, many of the ancient fathers were catholics uh, 200 300 400 years after jesus but i've read through the church fathers and here's what yeah. i see 
them saying one thing and then them saying the other thing? How could they be double-minded and say two different things? What I think is the Catholic Church went in and changed their writings to say what they wanted to say. So how do we know what we can believe yeah. of them? That's part of, of the problem. That's why I don't go Bible. to them. I don't take them above <laughs> Scripture. But when they do line up with the Bible, well, that just confirms the Bible's true. But when they say something opposite of the Bible, then you go, I wonder if that wasn't changed by some Catholic somewhere that said, I don't like that, and I wanted to say this. But this is one of the best, the rapture. Right. The pre-tribulational rapture yep. of the church there viewed she is. from the Bible and the ancient church by Ken Johnson. And this is the book he did in which he shows there is a pre-tribulational rapture. All these people today lie to you and say there's no such thing as a pre-trib rapture. And they try to say that uh, pre-trib rapture, that comes from Darby. Well, then get this book, Dispensationalism Before Darby. <laughs> <laughs> because people believed in a pre-trib rapture way before Darby, right? And uh, I just, I don't understand how people can say yeah. that. And he goes through in here and shows you 100, 200, 300 years after Jesus, they believed in a pre-trib rapture. Um, here's, here's Justin Martyr. Here's um, Iranius. Here's Tertullian. Here's Origen. Now, Origen was bad. He was very Catholic and not good. But Tertullian and Iranius and these other guys, they weren't that bad. Um, and like I said, where they line up with the Bible, we can take them. Uh, the Gnostic origins of Roman Catholicism. Excellent. The Gnostics. And he shows you what a Gnostic is and how a lot of Catholicism is Gnosticism. Ancient Word of God. How many of these do you have? KJV only or not? Well, he kind of yeah. goes in, yay, yeah, King James only. But then he says, but it's okay to use the New King James. And I'm like, no, 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 no. New King James takes out the word study in 2 Timothy 2.15. Well, the only command in the whole Bible to study, and the New King James takes that out. Why would you? The ancient Dead Sea That's Scroll terrible. calendar. Now, there's something I probably don't agree with him too much on, but there's a lot of people that want to that want to use this Antiochian calendar now and try to make everything line up with the Antiochian calendar and all that stuff. And but it's just there's so much knowledge here. But this isn't for. The new Christian. This is people like us that can discern and can practice discernment. The ancient book of Daniel. Now, is this true? Is there yeah. something to this? A lot of times he just shows you what it is and tells you about it. Uh, I don't see him as saying he believes it, but there's nothing wrong with studying it. But, but don't ever take something other than the Bible as your authority. And that's what you have to be careful of. Right. Ancient it's Cedar Olam. A lot of these are just, for me, a read, and then I put it away. Forget it. 3 Corinthians, I don't even know if that's a real, you know, really written by Paul, because Paul warns us there's people writing in, in his name. But yet, there's stuff in there that lines up with what Paul would have said. So, But we can't take that as scripture. We can't add that to our Bible. There's your ancient book of Jubilees right there. Right. And that just sounded exactly like the Bible to me. It just, it just confirms. It's just another witness. Yep. The ancient book of Gad the Seer. That's a weird, weird book, actually. Would you recommend that one? I've been that one. I've actually been. I mean, I recommend you read them all, but I do recommend you practice discernment. You don't take them as scripture. Don't believe it just because he says it. But it is an interesting topic. But be careful with it. And he goes into the Noahide laws. He goes into a lot of stuff. And so, it's it's yeah. neat that he did this. It shows he's very scholarly. But we really don't even need those. All we have is the King James. We got all we need. But it is interesting because, like you said, right. when we come across somebody that says, well, I only believe this book. I don't believe the King James. Well, then you know why they believe what they believe, and then you can combat them. The Ancient Apocalypse of Ezra. Now, that one was quite interesting, Second Ezra. And, uh, but like I said, I don't accept that as scripture, but it is interesting. Ancient Law of Kings, Noahide Law. And uh, I've never talked about the Noahide Laws. I haven't got into that because that's Noah back then. And uh, but there are people that are worried yeah. to death about it, uh, thinking that you know they're going to bring those back into effect and things like that. It's almost like they're the Ten Commandments, only there's seven of them, but the penalty is beheading. And so you know if they bring those back and they behead people, that could be what they're doing, beheading people during the tribulation. But my thought was they always it was the Muslims that behead people, Islam, and those are the ones that take power in the last days under the Antichrist. And they'll be beheading people. So 
Yeah. I've never really looked at the no hide laws as a threat, but I have looked at them and, you know, I understand where people are coming from and their fear and things like that as well. Um, I bought a coin many years ago and I got it from some Jewish guy in New York and he sent me the coin and he sent me a little coin with the seven Noahide laws. And so the Jews are very into those. And, uh, you know, they could you imagine Jews cutting off yeah. people's heads and Muslims, too? I mean, that just wow, that'd be uh, interesting. Uh, no, I don't want no. to be here for it. That's what I know. Yeah. It's going to get nasty. I mean, another one, Ancient Messianic Festivals and the Prophecies They Reveal. Excellent book here about the Jewish feasts and what they did and a lot of their traditions, but how it all ties to Christ. That one is a very good book. Very good. Uh, this is not his book, but this is a good one. Have you read this one before? After the Flood by Bill Cooper? Excellent book. If you've never nope. gotten that one, you need to get that one because he goes through and he shows you who is who, genealogy, just as the Bible gives it, and how all the ancient gods oh, and stuff that. are all from the Bible. And uh, it's just a really, after the flood, yeah. you can I get that book by Bill Cooper. Now, this one is almost the same that Ken Johnson wrote, Ancient Post-Flood History. And boy, I really ate this one yeah. up. This was a good book. And all the different uh, places in the world and how they all believed in a worldwide flood. Why? Because there was a worldwide flood. Yeah. So in Greece, and he mentions Beowulf. Yeah. He mentions, but even their languages and everything, it all ties back to the Bible. And uh, Ancient Origins stuff. of the Hebrew Roots Movement. That's an interesting one. Now, I've got my own theory about this. They want to say that this was the way that the Egyptians wrote their Hebrew alphabet. Um, if you want to learn Hebrew, uh, you just need to memorize the song Yankee Doodle Dandy. Because you sing that, you can sing the alphabet. Olive bait and gimel dalit, hey and bob and tie and hate and tate and yodin cough, love and noon samakai and pay and tide, cope and race, seen and sheen and tau. So there you go, there's your Hebrew alphabet. But um, but this uh, <laughs> this hey, is what they called old Hebrew letters. And I think God always had Hebrew like the letters we know today. And it's when they went to Babylon and went to Egypt that they changed their letters. But they try to say, no, this was the original letter. This just looks so childish and so pagan to me. Like almost like ruins yeah. or something from the Vikings. So I've seen a thing or two uh, about it. It's a fringe topic and something about turning yeah, the characters. Alan Horvath side. was very into and, that. He's got a book about those, so he shows you what they are. And I guess I put that in my Bible somewhere just to to know. Um, let me see if I can find that real quick. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I like to study. The stuff is important. Study. And Ken don't, Johnson's got to. Don't teach. There's so much I know that no, I can't exactly. teach. The more you I don't prepare, want to teach and, and teach somebody, hey, this may or may not be true. I don't like to talk like that. I want to know. I preach what I know is true. Amen. But. Um, well, right. I brought up Josephus so often. I was like, well, you know, I kind of need to read this book. So I read it. Because then you can say, well, I have read it, and I, you know, you're a little bit more qualified yeah, to talk exactly. about a book you've read. I don't know if you can see that, but there's, it's called the Atot, and there's the Hebrew letters, there's the, the Hebrew letters, and then there's their their letters. I don't know if you can read it. And by the way, have you ever studied Syriac? I don't know anybody yeah. or any college on the face of the earth that studies Syriac. None. And yet the King James translators knew Syriac, and it's very close to Hebrew, and you can get a Syriac New mm. Testament. And go through that. And I can't find my Syriac New Testament. Oh well. Anyway, they don't teach Syriac <laughs> because it was in Antioch of Syria that they first became Christians. Or they called themselves Christians. They were first called Christians in Antioch of Syria. And so that would be their oldest text, wouldn't it? 100, 200 years after Jesus. Hold on. <gasps> Excuse me, I'm almost sneezed. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. So why don't they teach Syriac in modern okay. schools? Because the Syriac text is the older text and actually yeah. the one that lines up with the King James Bible. No, oh, they don't want you to have a King James Bible, so oh, don't teach the Syriac. But yet many of the King James translators, they, they were able to do Syriac. And I've gone through and tried to learn Syriac, and it's, man, you had to be so intelligent back in those days to remember all the little rules and everything. And, uh, but it's very, very close to Hebrew. Now he has, I think I showed, I might have two of these, the one about fallen angels. I don't know if I showed that yet. I feel very, 
inferior to a lot of the teachers of older times. It's like they knew all these original languages and just the amount that was in their head is overwhelming. Now this one here, I do not even like Ken that Kent Johnson wrote this. I do not like this book. I almost don't even want to show it because it's the pre-flood origins of astrology. <laughs> and I am very much against astrology. I don't like astrology. Oh. And astrology is using these symbols and signs to try to tell the future for you. Make it your little prophecy. And I don't right. think you can do that. I don't think you should do that. I think that's wrong to try to deviate. Right. What is the word they use in the Bible? Divination. Yeah. But also, I believe God gave the stars, and he said he gave them for signs and for times and for seasons. So God has it set up in a way that he put them up there in such a way that they can be looked at by man. But I think the devil twists it. And I think the best thing to do is not get into it. I want to get sure. into astronomy rather than astrology because David said, look up at the heavens. Sure. You know, why would he say that? So I noticed on your website too, you have um, the Revelation 12 sign and things like that. And, uh, you know, that's interesting. That's in the Bible. So if it's mm -hmm. in the Bible, it's fair game. It's a topic we can talk about. Amen. But we just shouldn't go too much into it. And I don't, right. I don't think we should go too much into anything. The Bible right. says a false balance is an abomination unto the Lord. And um, a lot of people, they're like this. <laughs> so they're way down here in one thing and not in the right thing. A lot of pre preachers preach so hard on sin and evil and the evil in the world that they don't preach on grace and charity and love. They're false balance. So Ken Johnson has a lot of good books, but uh, I wouldn't be honest. I would recommend don't read them because <laughs> I don't want you to get you off on a tangent that you shouldn't be getting off on. So I like your website, but uh, I just be careful not to get people off too much on a tangent because there are some people that get off too far and they get into weird right. stuff. And that's what you've got to be careful of. Well, like you said, uh, you got to use discernment and you got to know right. the Bible first and best. And so when you read these things, you can actually compare the two. And that's right. very important to actually know what the truth is and have that, you know, that straight right. edge for the rest of straight life edge, yeah. to compare it. So to. just he's got some yeah. neat books. I would recommend a couple, but others. But to me, I just like history. I like things like that. I don't know what else I have. Let me see what else I've got up there. I'll put these up too. But it is good to learn. And uh, he's got an awful lot. Learn the Bible. Stick with the book. Amen. Uh, put this up. Here we go. That's the truth. It was uh, it was good to get the books that the Bible reference though, and I really enjoyed reading them. The Den of Robert Breaker. I can't show them all, so I won't try, but... <laughs> yeah. There's <laughs> another one of his that uh, Ancient Prophecies Revealed. That's a pretty good one. That's a bigger book. Yeah. And he goes into prophecies and, and uh, pretty interesting. A lot of historical stuff. If you haven't seen that one, that's a good one. Here's one. Newton's yeah. Revised History of Ancient Kingdoms. Sir Isaac Newton. He did a great job with that book. Here's that Alan Horvath. I think Horvath um, passed away. I I don't agree with hardly anything this guy says, but he's got that book to show you what he called the old Hebrew characters. And like I said, I, I think those old Hebrew characters yeah. were them changing their own language with symbols that they would have learned in Egypt. Because, you know, what did they worship in Egypt? They worshiped the cow, you know, the, the, the big horn thing. Well, there you go. There's the big horn thing. So I don't go by that, but... You do, you know, it's just, I like to study and learn things, but uh, Tabernacle by Peter Ruckman and uh, different things, but yeah. Oh man, showing all my books today. <laughs> the best book is this one right here. Show and tell. Dispensational Truth by Clarence Larkin. And that book right there is the best. And if you don't have that, you need to get that. And uh, that's an important Zero. book. So let me sure. see if I can get these on so I can listen to you. How do these things go? So do you have Dispensational Truth by Clarence Larkin? All right, you can go to kjb1611.org and get that book. And it's a very, very good book. Um, dispensational Truth. Yeah, you've taught me a lot well, about Larkin is, stuff. wow, it's like a Bible institute and, in a uh, book. So definitely go to kjb1611.org yeah. and get that book on Dispensational Truth. 
Yeah, I'd like to. I really love it when you teach on dispensations, and I think defining those lines really, you know, gives you a lot right. of clarity. That's right. what it's all about. Like, go define the lines. Find out what fits inside the, the box of whatever it is you're studying, what's outside of the box, and riffraff you don't need to pay attention to. But I've, uh, I've gotten a lot of the books by, by Ken that you had there, and he's a super humble guy, and really really nice he's emailed me before and he's like oh i'm glad i could be a part of this you know just because i told him about how much he meant to me and the website and stuff and i mean the guy's got more more books than he lets on and he's just he's not um one of the ego people and i just appreciate uh people who are fascinated by the topic and want to right. see what's out there and want to learn more and like i said the more you prepare right. the more prepared you are but, uh, to me i just like to read i like to learn That's and those too. are topics that are interesting to me but Again, you have to practice discernment. That is the most important thing because you can go overboard. And that's what I want to yeah. warn people about is don't go overboard because I've met people, they go overboard, yeah. and now the rest of their life, their ministry is uh, talking about how to baptize for the angels that fell or some silly thing. <laughs> You're like, what? Well, baptize for angels? <laughs> so yeah. um, you got to be careful. You don't go that way. You'll, you'll overwhelm say that. yourself. You'll exhaust yeah. yourself. So you Dr. Know. Peter Ruckman, was where, where I went to Bible school, and he was a very, very smart fella, and he knew so much. I mean, he probably forgot more than he, he even knew, um, or at least that he taught us, and because he yeah. studied all that. And uh, even before he was saved, he got into all these bad things like Eastern mysticism. He studied, he just devoured it and learned all that, and then just forgot it all. So uh, studying is wonderful, but um, much study is weariness of the flesh. And it can lead you down the wrong path if you don't mm. go back to the Bible every time. And that's what it's all about, the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, and you can get exhausted yeah. very easily. But uh, Well, I'm not seeing any questions. <laughs> Someone asks one question, though. They said, was that a whiteboard behind you? That's not a whiteboard, is it? I wish it was a whiteboard. When you talk and do your sermons, I feel like I need to walk yeah. around with a whiteboard myself. Yeah. Is that do you have a projector and it's projecting on that? Is that what that's for for projecting stuff? No, this is, I'm actually there's nowhere in this house to like do a video. This is the theater I'm in, and okay, that's the so that's, screen. But it, it does it project onto the screen like a projector? Or okay, so yeah, yeah. And um, let's yep. see, another person says something about the Georgia Guidestones, and you know about those, right? Do you have that on your website? Um, I sure do. I've been there twice. Um, I, I, yeah. And the you have? first time I went, I was on deputation. I was just passing through, and I stopped and looked at it. Uh, the next time I went, I was with my wife. And they're in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around. And I just, the more I looked at it, the more I got angry. And I just, I said, Lord, yeah. how can I show my disdain for how evil this is? And uh, the thought struck yeah. my mind, just pee on it. So... There's no one around. <laughs> and I went over to that like, tablet that says maintain humanity under 500 million. And I said, this is what I think of your depopulation agenda. And I wet that rock real good. And uh, that's all I can say about that. And you Robert can call that vandalism if you'd like. I hope they sue me because I'd like to know who the person was that did that. Because you know the mystery behind it. Who's the one that put that there? R.C. Christian. Who is he? That's obviously a made up name. And it's in a place where it's in the middle of nowhere. I noticed after that there's cameras there now, so they can see who comes. But when I was there, where there was no cameras, and uh, I did what I thought that place needed because those are sick. That is the Illuminati yeah, evil depopulation you, agenda, the Ten Commandments, the New World Order, and I just showed what I thought about it. <laughs> so I, I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad either. You know, I wonder if the Old Testament prophets ever did that. You know, if they're walking through Israel and they see an idol or something and they're just like, Lord, can I go pee on that? I don't know, but uh, I just feel like, oh, sure. I you know, so you, I don't see or... that as bad. I think that's probably the best thing for those things. Anyway, um, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> what was that story about the guy who chopped up his father's idol with an axe and then put the axe in the in the hand of one of his idols. I think I had, that actually came up reading through mm. Jubilees or something. I remember that story. And, um, there's a story about where a kid did that, and he's like, why do you want me to pray to your stupid idols? They're just statues made by hands. So what the kid did was he goes in there, and he 
hacks up one of the idols he wanted him to pray to, and he put it in the hand of another oh. idol and blamed it on oh, him. Funny. <laughs> and you know they probably believed it too, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was mad. Well, that, I that was mad. <laughs> but I know how you feel about those guide stones because they are pure evil, and I can't help but have the same feelings of just wanting to yeah, get rid of I them. I probably right shouldn't now. tell about what I did to one of the idols in Honduras, so I won't. I won't talk about that. But uh, there's this curve <laughs> when you come down the mountain, and there's this Mary statue. And you stop the car and you walk out through this little cornfield and look at this huge Mary statue and there's money everywhere. People stop and give it money, but I, I stopped oh. and gave it an offering too. But that's all I'll say about that. Um, a nice little <laughs> offering that, let's just say if they would have seen me, they probably would have killed me, I tell you. But how people can worship a just little piece of cement just makes me so sad. It's so sad. It's just disgusting. Um, but wow, that's, um, I know. it's sad how people can be so ignorant and worship a, 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 a little idol, but yet they do, they do, and I find that so sad. But amen, amen. Well, what else have you got for us? Anything else? Um, your website is uh, down on the bottom. It has been written dot com. How'd you get that uh, idea for that uh, title? Oh, well, basically, I wanted to put it as as it has or er, as it is written, but mm -hmm. that was already taken apparently. But um, I kind of liked being a bit more passive and saying it has been written because I, it, it just makes me um, more of a perceiver. It's not like my thing. You know, the Bible is its own word of God, and I'm just a witness. And I want to show people what has been written, and you can't forget it. Like, these things have been written a long time ago, and it is a text that can't be anything other than the word of God. And... The more you go to research that, the more you, that becomes a reality to you. And I think that one of my favorite verses that inspired it is uh, the Corinthians verse about, as it is written, um, no eye has seen and no ear has heard the things that God has prepared for people who love them. And mm -hmm. That's our hope. That's our only hope is Jesus. And, you know, that... That's why we live. That's why we carry on day after day. That's why we're going to deal with our trials. It's, we're building character. We know that God started us here so that we could have the free will to make the choice and uh, choose him and not our own instant gratification, sins, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And once you start living that way, it's right. that's what it's all about. And everyone can have this like I didn't have it for so long where I just kind of wanted to do what I wanted to do and that was more important to me than anything else and I did that long enough thank God he was patient with me and uh, when the time came to open my eyes to the truth he opened them and I just wish they were open sooner and I wish I can give this to people so what happened to me doesn't happen to them because I asked all kinds of questions I was in a massive church where I grew up, it had two zip codes in this church, and when you have that big of a church, like it's there's no community, and you go to church, you hide. They kind of talk about some sermon that's not very something uh, pertinent. But the audio still okay. Here's something in the background. I wonder what it is. It might be on my. Yeah. Okay. It's us. It's us talking in the background. Okay. Weird. Okay. Accidentally hit that. Go ahead. Yeah. Anyway, I just don't want that to happen to other people. I want them to have the answers to the questions they ask when they need them, when right. they have a crisis of faith. Because they're there. And it's a shame if someone's asking and there's well, no Someone's asking a question about the Shroud of Turin. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about it? Be careful. I, hmm. I, I think it's amazing. Like, I, when I first started getting into it, I... I didn't expect much again. Um, on that tangible evidence section, you got a few different people telling their stories. One of them is from a photographer who was not a Christian. He just went there to do his job and take pictures. And they're going to document this stuff. And he goes around telling people what he found about it. And he's saying that the, the image in this thing has basically been burnt into the cloth. It wasn't a die. It wasn't um, something that we could have 
achieved. And he talks about the various aspects of it that convinced him Jesus was real. And he tells his own story about it. And um, there's another guy who goes around. I think his name is, let me look at it here real quick, Russ. He's been on Prophecy Watchers and such, and he does an incredible job explaining what it's all about. Um, and after I've seen it all now, like, you know, it's another one of these things where if you really want to go and get down to the nitty gritty, go and see it yourself. But these two guys, one of them became a Christian through it. Um, and the other one is a Christian and he just talks about the details. So go, go see it. I mean, they do a much better job explaining it than I will here, but, um, it's not something I can ignore. It's, uh, I already believe in Jesus, obviously. I didn't need the Shroud of Turin for faith, but that what they have is not a small potato. It's worth examining and a hmm. super fascinating topic. So I recommend going okay. and checking it well, out. Okay, I've studied it, and I don't know. I'm just one of those things where it's like, I don't need that to believe. I need the Bible to believe. But, uh, you know, there's two thoughts on it. They think it could be Jesus, which... The Bible says he was had a head napkin. So where's the head napkin part? And, and it yeah. sounds like there was two different wrappings. But what if uh, it wasn't Jesus? What if it was uh, Judas? Because the devil was in him. So what well, if someone tried to, I don't know, clone what they found on there? And that would be the body of the Antichrist, the literal body of Jesus? I don't know. I'm just saying it, it's two different thoughts. I'd say watch okay. watch the videos because it's not it's it's um it's incredible. There's but it's definitely there something to I'm it. It, just seems like it's, now, it can't be just a forgery. But what is it? You know. So. Yeah, there was a head thing that Jesus had folded and put it by the side, right. and that has its significance. Basically, saying "I'm coming back" right. is what that meant. And there's little details like that that you learn about through studying the Jewish people. Right. When they're at like a dinner table, if it was folded, it means I'm down, coming back. Done. Yep. Right, and um, that's one thing about that. But then the shroud itself, there's a lot of details about well, that, and that was one of those things. Like I said, when I first heard it, I was not expecting much, but then it's worth so a look. The Catholics it love it, so it they worship it. That's the shame. They worship that instead of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. They worship, they worship everything. everything. <laughs> they even worship a, a statue of Mary with yellow liquid on it. I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Well, that's about it. Nobody seems to have any more questions. So, I guess we'll stop there. But when we finish, give me your address because we want to mail, right. mail you that book for sure. The Dispensational Truth book. So, you'll have that. And, um, oh, that would be awesome. Anybody else have a question real quick? Otherwise, we're going to call it quits. And... Uh, Tomorrow's my wife's birthday, so it's going to be a special day for us. And uh, But I'm glad we got together and we're able to do this. And um, I hope this will be a blessing to people, but you got to get King James verses on there. you got to do that. That will just make it so much better. Amen. And uh, it looks I, like... I agree 100% and I will. Uh, I appreciate you doing this for me and it's you've taught me a lot. Like I really love your sermons and uh, I don't know how you crank out so many of them so fast, but your sermons yeah. are packed with a lot of great stuff. And as you've seen, I got you on uh, all over mm, the we website, saw that. and it's it's just because they're so good. Like if it's good, I put it on there. And um, there's a few guys that I just really enjoy learning from. JD Farag is mm -hmm. one. Um, you're another. Chuck Missler. Like there's Hal Lindsey. You know, I really like a lot of these. Uh, I just like the way they talk and. Um, I appreciate that you've done so much for us and that there's a guy out there on YouTube doing this because, you know, for a long time I, I didn't have a church around me that got into the to the good stuff. It was very lifeless churches that I was around. And I wanted to know. I was hungry for this stuff. So you were one of the guys that were out there providing it, and I just want to thank you for doing that. Well, amen. You're welcome. You're welcome. I do my best. Amen. Um, that's about it uh, so you're close to uh, Sydney right about an hour away from Sydney so uh, yep. I know there's people over the years yep. contact me from around there I don't know hopefully you can meet them someday or something because it's hard to find good Christians in Australia isn't it yeah yeah yes there's a 
I've, it's a it's a strange place. It's definitely different. Like I grew up in the Bible Belt, and it wasn't unusual to talk about God. But if you talk about it here, people kind of step back and go, "Whoa, yeah. what I got well, here." I'd love to visit there sometime and see it. I guess, but I don't know. I yeah, or if we welcome. ever make it that way. I was hoping I could sail in a boat one day to go there, but my boat sank. <laughs> but that's okay. So, <laughs> yeah, well, that happened before you were on your way. Fun. But um, be careful. And uh, what are they doing there <laughs> as far as lockdowns and all that stuff? Are you okay over there in Australia? Yeah, finally, I got the first version of Corona in uh, California. That was no fun. Lost my taste for five months, and we. Uh, flew over and straight into a lockdown we had to pay for wow. at a hotel wow. stuck in there for two weeks that was no fun and then as soon as we got out you like couldn't go anywhere and you'd get fined if you went out of your little district like a serious fine it was like full-on communism or something and then we had to wear masks for the longest time and um we actually just got coronavirus again about a week ago and it was um very mild, very. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not fun to have the flu. <laughs> that's but, right. Yep, that's what happens. Well, um, it's exactly. a shame that they're so socialistic there and gone to socialism. Um, that's sad. Yeah, but they're Australians will crack. Like, you know, they're the kind of people who are pretty subservient for a while. But if they like, if they decide something, they do it as a country, and they'll they'll crack. I think probably before Americans wow. would. So there's a lot of tension yeah. all over the planet right now. And it's kind of wondering where's it going to. And uh, I think it's a plan to bring in the book of Revelation, just like the Bible says. And it's like they're working for the devil to do yeah. that very same thing. And that's part of your website, too, where it says um, evil. What is it? Um, evil in power. So people can check that out. And uh, we can see that, too. So. All right. Well, I guess that's it. Um, thank you for the happy birthdays to my wife. And uh, Sean, I enjoyed it. Absolutely. It was good meeting you, and it's good hearing from you. And just really enjoyed this. I hope it's been a blessing to other people. Sorry that it didn't work in the beginning, that we weren't able to show the website. But, uh, well, that gives you the opportunity out of curiosity. Go look at it yourself. So it's right there under. Go ahead. The website's there. I appreciate it, man. Praise God. You know, we're all. We're all after the same thing here, Amen. the truth. So thanks for having me on. And, and the truth awesome is from the Word of God, and that's what it's all about. We want people to get in the Bible. There's your uh, website. It has been written.com. My website is thecloudchurch.org, and uh, every week I try to put a new sermon in English and Spanish. Um, I might take off soon, though, really soon for a week or two because, man, I'm tired. <laughs> and we've just been so busy, and uh, so we might do that soon especially around, you know, 4th of July and things like that. So, but I try every week, but I've got enough videos that if I miss a week, then people can still find one of the other ones. So, all right, I guess we'll say goodbye to everybody. And, and uh, so thanks for being with us. Stick with me as I try to figure out how to turn this thing off. <laughs>